Hello, my name is Y Lam, and today we're going to be taking a look at the new FR Skies digital radio. This is the Horus X12S. Uh, this is the radio that's been floating around for quite a while now. I think they released uh, the first pictures like eight to six months ago, and we've seen a lot of people have prototypes of it. This is the actual production model, so we're going to open it up, take a look, see if anything has changed. Uh, before we open up the case, this is the carton it comes in. Uh, has some shrink wrap to protect the case, so it's very nicely wrapped uh, when it comes to you. So before we open up the radio, let's talk very quickly about the case. Uh, definitely a very nice case that comes with it. Uh, looks like they beefed up the corners a little bit to ensure that uh, it can survive bumps and dings along the way. Uh, most of us probably will not be using this case. Uh, you know, if you're a quad flyer, you're most likely working out of a backpack. So this would definitely not fit in most backpacks. So we would most likely just go ahead and put this case somewhere else or reuse it for some other purpose, maybe batteries or something. But it does seem like it's a very nice case. Uh, they definitely put some... Uh, design thoughts into this, but personally, I'd rather they have a simple case and then either reduce the price or put more money into the digital radio itself. We have two latches up front, and when you open it up, uh, you can see the radio right there. Up top here, you have two uh, foam blocks to keep the radio in place. So let's go ahead and take out the radio. So we'll talk about the radio in a second put this aside. Inside here is a very simple instruction manual that comes with it. Most radios, you know, they come with a bit, bit beefier instruction manual, but I guess uh, FR Skies, maybe it's downloaded online or they're still working on it. Up top here is the charger for your radio. So that's always useful and needed. Nothing on this side, nothing crossing over here. And this is the neck strap for your radio. Definitely a much beefier neck strap than what we're used to seeing. So definitely quality neck strap, which is always good and nice, nice to see. Other than that though, there is nothing else in this case. So let's go ahead, close it up, and let's take a look at the digital radio. From the looks of things, it doesn't look like anything cosmetic has changed. Most of the switches and settings are where we saw them on the prototype models. So definitely still very nice looking. Uh, definitely has plenty of switches for you. Um, just feeling the gimbals, the gimbals right out of the box, uh, there's definitely quality to them. Uh, there's definitely more resistance to them and uh, some people may like that, some people may not. But uh, you can always adjust these to whatever um, tension you like. But uh, definitely quality gimbals come with it. One thing to note on this side, this is a ratcheting throttle. So if you don't like that ratcheting, uh, you're going to have to open up the back of this and then flip around uh, the plate that uh, gives you that ratcheting feeling on this side. Uh, as opposed to the Tyrannus one, uh, this one's much more noticeable. So like on the Tyrannus one, it's almost, you almost don't feel it, but this one, uh, you can definitely feel it. So if you don't like that ratcheting, that's probably gonna be one of the first things that you do very quickly. Uh, in terms of switches, all of these are three position switches. This one up here is the momentary switch or trainer switch, however you want to call it. Uh, more, th <clears throat> more three position switches here. Another three position switch up top. And then this is the only two position switch on the controller itself. So definitely a lot of options for you uh, in terms of switches. The knobs, they're... Uh, I, didn't really hear anybody talk about this, but all of the knobs are actually different. There's a detent on this one to center it, so that is the center, and it's very easy to find. For this one, this is a clicking knob in which the uh, going all the way to the left is its natural off position, and then switching it all the way to the right for maximum. And then this one, there is no detent at all. So you can move this all the way around and there's absolutely no detent. So each one of these is styled a little bit differently so you can use them for something different. So I didn't really, uh, I didn't know about that until I actually got my hands on the radio. Uh, the trims, uh, they work as expected. Um, really not much to say about them except that they're there. The sliders, there is a detent to the sliders. 
a good bit of resistance to them and you can definitely very easily find the detent at the center for the sliders. If you're going to be using this for a quadcopter, most of these levers and switch and uh, dials you'll probably not end up using, but who knows. Um, over on this side, there is a, um, a rotating dial. Uh, for those of you who have used like um, the, not Spectrum, but Futava radios, uh, this will be, uh, this will feel very familiar with you. There's also a switch when you push in. Uh, each one of these red markers is actually a menu, so there's system, there's telemetry, there's model, and then there's a return to the home screen. Over on this side, there is a more of a, a joystick feeling on uh, on this switch, so I'm really not sure what that's used for just yet. And then there's the standard page up and page down, which is what we're used to seeing on uh, most Tyrannus radios. Hidden underneath uh, where you would have your uh, lanyard is the actual on button. So let's go ahead and very quickly look at the back of the radio. Uh, one thing to notice is that uh, there are two extra controls up top here. And this one has a detent right at the very center, a very noticeable detent. And on the other side, it is uh, an identical switch. So there is a detent right in the middle, and then there is actually a notch right here. So it gives you good purchase on uh, this particular one. And you can just feel for this notch to know um, where it is in the uh, current settings. So pretty nice uh, wheel for both sides if you're going to use them. Uh, up top here, if you flip this out, this is a place where you can plug in a uh, external antenna. I'm not sure exactly uh, if it's an external antenna for uh, the FR size system in here. Uh, I didn't really read too much into that, so I'm not sure what that external antenna is for or is if it's an antenna for the module uh, that you can plug in. So in here, you can fit any JR style module, which is like the biggest bonus for using uh, an FR Sky radio is to be able to have that module. It gives you so much flexibility. Almost, actually all radios should have this type of module or some sort of module system to where you can expand it to have uh, other custom radios uh, be, be able to use for your radio of choice. Really useful to have. Over here is all of your expanding ports. So you have your USB, uh, USB SD card, Looks like an audio cable and then a either a buddy port or some sort of a specific port for you to plug in uh, for your FR Sky. So all of your expanding ports are nicely covered up here. Uh, what you'll notice is that they have some nice rubber grips on the side. Definitely a really nice feature. The only thing I don't like about the back is that there is no removable battery. So if your battery starts declining or going bad, you're going to have to open up this whole back piece to get to that removable battery. So now let's go ahead and take a look at the LCD screen. Obviously that's the big nice LCD at the top of it, which is uh, rather bright. Uh, we had this out outside and uh, you can perfectly see the LCD screen. There wasn't really any issues with that. This is the natural home screen in which you have your counters uh, that you can set up. There's also things like your RSSI, your batteries, and your analog voltage. So a few telemetry things that you can have uh, on your main display. So we're going to go ahead and hit the system button down here. And over here you can see there's plenty of uh, options for you to choose from. Select model time, display. We're not going to go through all of these, but you can easily rotate the knob to get through uh, one of these and then you can push in uh, to actually go inside one of these menus. And then you can hit return to back out of it. You can go to model, in which case you can set up all of your uh, specific configuration trims and everything that you want on your controller. And then the telemetry, if you have it set up, uh, can be displayed very easily with the telemetry button. So that's everything that we have uh, on the right side for the uh, circular menu system. On the other side, we have the page up and the page down, in which case you can scroll through the menu system on each one, I presume.
So before wrapping up the video uh, for this quick look, I just wanted to give you a size comparison really quick uh, between radios. A lot of us have heard that uh, this radio is rather large and after handling it for a while it's really not that much larger than a standard size radio. So over here we can have a side-by-side -side comparison uh, next to a Spectrum DX6. I don't have a uh, Tyrannus with me, never really bought a Tyrannus radio just wasn't um, just didn't like the radio so that's why I never bought one and uh, have high hopes for this one because this looks to be a good radio but as you can tell uh, it is bigger and if you lift it um, it is slightly heavier I don't know the exact weight not really caring to actually go look at it but um, you can tell that it's slightly heavier but it's not so much heavier that it becomes a burden in my opinion just by lifting the two radios side by side it's per it's perfectly fine so I'm just gonna go ahead and stand them up and give you a shot of them as you can see uh, the horse is definitely wider uh, which um, if you have a backpack it might actually make it more difficult if not impossible to fit into your backpack so that's something that you want to be aware of when you actually uh, buy the Tyrannus if you're one of the uh, backpack people that want to fit everything that you have into a backpack if we look at the sides uh, it's actually uh, not too thick of a radio. The only thing about this is that uh, the top bar does make it quite quite a bit thicker up top. It would have been nice if this was somehow either retractable or you can shift it back. In which case, this will become a will become a much thinner radio, and it would be easier to fit into uh, you know some sort of backpack device or third-party case. So that was a quick look at the new FR Sky radio. I really can't give you much of an opinion on the radio right now, not until I actually get some stick time in it. It looks like it's going to be a really good radio. It feels really nice. It feels really high tech. But until you actually get out and use it, um, really don't have much to say. I will say for my small hands, um, trying to get to some of the corners can be quite difficult if you're pinching with it. So that's something that uh, people with small hands, you definitely want to try out the radio, make sure that uh, the gimbals uh, feel good to you and you can actually reach the outer edges of each of the sides on the gimbals. It's a, it's a tiny bit of a stretch, uh, it's something that I've already noticed. But uh, it's so far, it doesn't seem like it's going to be a big deal, but you never know. Uh, as I said, uh, with experience, uh, you'll find out whether or not this radio is for you. But uh, so far, so good. Uh, really looking forward to getting out there, uh, playing with this radio, and seeing what it can do.